What's good, baby? What's good? Man, I missed you all. We've got a lot to catch up on. It's only been a few weeks, but we just had the dust settle on the largest international Valorant tournament to date, and there were a ton of surprises to talk about. We've also got VCT Game Changers action going down and a recent roster announcement if you didn't hear the news. We're also going to set our sights on a winner-take-all showdown in the North American Last Chance Qualifier. And if that wasn't enough to get you excited, we've got a special guest who's going to be joining us for this episode of Chalked, so you know it's going to be good. Strap in, dear friends. This is Aftershock. We're just about a week removed from Masters 3 Berlin, and the community's still buzzing from the results. So, let's take a sec to revisit what went down. Overall, group stage went about as well as most people expected. While the majority may have not predicted the seeds in this order, Vision Strikers and Ascend made their way out of Group A with the first and second seed, respectively. Many felt confident that Envy would advance to the knockout stage from Group B, but the question on everyone's mind was, who would join them? Zeta Division, Crew Esports, and VivoKeed all seemed to match really well on paper. And while both VivoKeed and Crew show signs of promise, it was ultimately Crew Esports that joined Envy after a 2 0 win in the decider match over VivoKeed. Group C contained two teams that many expected not to just advance, but to make a deep run at the tournament, and that's exactly what they did. Not only did 100 Thieves and Gambit make it out of their group, but they put on a wild match in the winner's finals that went the distance and became an instant classic. That left Group D. Brent Esports was not able to attend Berlin due to visa issues, so Group D became a double round robin group that featured G2, Sentinels, and F4Q. F4Q had all the makings of an upset team. Fast, exciting, in-your-face playstyle with nothing to lose in the world to gain. They took a map off of G2 in the opener and almost gave Sentinels more than they could handle on Split, but ultimately fizzled out, giving G2 and Sentinels the final two spots in the knockout stage. This is where things got a little spicy. Not only did all of North America end up on the same side of the bracket, but there were some insane matchups in the first round, as you can see here. 100 Thieves once again found themselves in a heavyweight bout, this time with Ascend, as the series won all three maps and map three required overtime rounds to determine a winner. The other major story from the first round of the knockout stage included Masters 2 winners, Sentinels. I don't think anyone expected a full tournament sweep like we saw in Reykjavik, but there was the expectation that Sentinels had the best odds to win the whole thing, and at the very least, be in the finals. Sure, so they drop a map to both G2 and F4Q in the group stage. They're, they're gonna be fine, right? Shazam, and it's over! It's done with! They say when you come for the king, you best not miss an Envy! They didn't! The hot-handed Envy continued their undefeated run with the 2-0 sweep for Sentinels, and then did the exact same thing to 100 Thieves in the semifinals to shock everyone but themselves and earn a spot in the grand finals without dropping a single map. On the other side of the bracket, Gambit continued their slow methodical march with a 2-1 win over Vision Strikers and a smooth 2-0 over G2 to make the grand finals. The stage was set. One of these two teams would be crowned Masters 3 champions. It was a fascinating clash of styles. Gambit, known for their slower surgical style with Redgar as a surgeon and Nats as a scalpel, versus Envy with a brilliant-minded IGL and finesse and one of the hottest duelists in the world in Ye. While all maps were close, including one overtime dance, Gambit ultimately walked away with a 3-0 sweep, handing Envy their first map loss and series loss of the tournament before hoisting the trophy and being crowned champions. So where do we go from here, you ask? Let's talk about the North American Last Chance Qualifier. 10 teams will clash starting on October 12th with one goal in mind, the final spot up for grabs at Valorant Champions. Eight teams from North America, including your very own version one, along with two from the Oceanic region, will compete in a double elimination bracket to see who will be heading to Berlin at the end of the year for the final Valorant tournament of 2021. More on this when the bracket's released, but for now, take a look at the list of teams participating here. If that wasn't enough Valorant for you, there's more. Version 1 announced the signing of an all-women's team, Version X. 
let's take a look at their roster announcement video. And so bloodshot, burning up a moon rock Hotter than a sunspot, surfing on a moonshot Belly full of gut rot, turkey full of buckshot Mood ring black, new mood jack New moon, new year, cruising in the back New codes hack, new lows, new flow New nothing but the Wait, Andy, are you okay? Eyes biggest in the plates Pac-Man, he can eat the whole interstate Chase his own ghost, hope the Fed keep the interest rate Low for the kid, find a place, stand his hat rack Papers in the backpack, papers caught in abstract Ever since, been completely shad racked Let's talk about Chalked, shall we? If you haven't seen a Chalk segment before, every episode we get a clip from you, the viewers, that, you know, maybe wasn't your best work. This time, we're gonna have a clip from our very own Thunderhips, who sent in something from Breeze that I'm, I'm very excited to take a look at. And the reason for that is I've had the pleasure of watching some of his clips before, and let's, let's just say they always deliver. Let's take a look. So as I mentioned, we're on Breeze. He's playing Omen. Bromans unite. Uh, all right, he's got a sheriff. First round, so pistol round. Opted not to buy armor, decides to just go full sheriff instead. Questionable decision-making on the skin. I'm not gonna lie to you, but I digress. I'll take a look at the clip. Playing mid. Enemy and defend us both. Okay, dope. So we'll pause here for a second. Dope shoots out the Rainalier, gives his team a bit more room to work across the middle of the map. Awesome. Understanding mid priority, uh, especially on Breeze, I think is very important. Giving him room to work with that helps as well. It looks like he's about to get hit by the KO stun, or the KO suppress, excuse me. Does. Watch as this guy die. Okay. Tag though, the paranoia. I love the follow up. I like. Oh, no. <laughs> see that that feels bad that feels bad because like that wasn't i don't know if that was his fault necessarily and i've again i've seen some clips of my boy thunderhips uh, they've they've been less than great sometimes but this one wasn't his fault i gotta look at that again i gotta look at that again because lands a couple of shots Blinded. right Shadow Steps turn. Yeah, dude, that's a bad day. That sucks. That, I am so sorry. My friend, I feel so bad for you. That's gonna do it for this episode of Aftershock. The next time we chat, the picture around the North American LCQ should be so much more clear, and I cannot freaking wait. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Until next time, have a good one.